Right, Uma Faiken. Uh, if this particular, if the beginning of this particular video sounds familiar, it's because it is. I continually have to repeat myself, which ironically is something that a person said in uh, my last video, the idea of manhood and fighting. Uh, that wasn't exactly the title, but something like that. The manhood and fighting on your sense of manhood will get you killed. I think that was more close to what the title was. He said he didn't like me repeating myself. Now, he didn't like me repeating myself. Now, what is wrong with him saying that? The video is on manhood and how your sense of manhood and your sense of how a man should fight could end up having you lose your life. And the one thing he gets from that is that I repeat my sentence. Now, if this is not a child of 10, then whoever made that comment should be ashamed of themselves. Because they are the kind of people that is the problem. You get, what you get out of my video is that I repeat myself. That's a, it's a shame. Now, let me say this on repeating myself. I repeat myself, Right? Because for six years I've been trying to make one major point. 300 and some videos, been trying to make one major point through all of them. That is this. There is a difference between fighting and self-protection. A difference between fighting and combat. And I don't really even like the word combat because I see people now doing Wing Chun and Silat and Kali and all this and saying and, and Karate and Graf Maga and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo. And they're saying this is combat. And they're saying it's combat because it sells today. But when you look at what they're doing, there is nothing that they have done to alter that particular art they're talking about to make it more street worthy. But they just take off their gi or take off their uniform, put on jeans, put on sneakers, put on a sweatshirt, and all of a sudden now it becomes combat. So I don't even like that word because that word has been bastardized. I have to find something else, some other way of describing what I am about. Uh, but I will use combat and self-protection interchangeably until I find another uh, term to use. But the bottom line is, for six years I've been trying to say that fighting is something that does not interest me at all does not interest me at all. I am interested in several things. I am interested in training. I am interested in sparring, knowing that sparring is not real street fighting, but it is preparation for that in as safe a manner as you can. And I'm interested in self-protection. In between there, for myself, I'm not interested in fighting. There's a gentleman, and I don't, I'm not pointing him out or telling you who he is, because this is the, the, the he's not the only one. I am showing a, a type of uh, clinch in a way, all right? And I'm showing this and saying that when you enter in, you can turn the individual and throw him into a rose bush or into a tree or whatever, set, you know, off balance him. And he obviously trained in Muay Thai, and what he is telling me is that if my arms, elbows are this way, if my hands are this way, if I'm like this, if I'm like that, then the man can't do this, and the man can't do that. And he's telling me all these things that he probably learned in Thailand or from Master Thai DVDs, whatever the case might be. Right? Maybe he went to Thailand and he trained. Maybe he went to New York and he trained. But he's talking from a position of formal training in Muay Thai. And he still doesn't get it. He's telling me if my elbows are like this, and as though, as though I am entering into some kind of clinch in order to move around like this and get a side knee. Or move around like this and then get another knee. And then go up and down and try to use a frame and then that was that's not my interest that is Muay Thai in the ring that is maybe dirty boxing in a cage and that is fighting and he did not look at the video to make the point to see the point that I was making because he did not want to the problem with most people and this is something that I got out of very early is that you look at violence. Listen, listen, and I repeat, will repeat myself as often as possible. You look at your art 
and your heart is so attached to your art that you keep saying that your art, you try to shape violence to deal with, to fit your art. Instead of making your art fit the violence. I love Muay Thai. Oh, I love Muay Thai. Muay Thai is street fighting. No, it's not. You're not training against weapons. You're not training against multiple opponents. Oh, I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in a street fight. No, it's not. The last thing you want to do when somebody has a knife is to close in on them and try to grapple the knife out of their hands. Oh, I love point karate. I love point karate. Oh, point karate. It's like street fighting. No, it's not. You're not fighting multiple people. You're not fighting against weapons. This keeps happening, keeps happening. Oh, what, what's the, I love MMA, I love MMA. You start MMA like this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on. Real street fights, when, or real street assaults, a man wants to assault you without giving you a chance to protect yourself. So no matter how realistic MMA looks, it is not street fighting. You are still fighting one person and you are not fighting with weapons, okay? This love affair that many of you have with your art, I pray to God that you never really have to deal with a knife. And don't tell me you've dealt with a knife and you trained in Muay Thai or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or you trained in boxing or you trained in karate or you trained in Krav Maga or you trained in Judo or you trained in MMA. Don't tell me you've done that and you didn't do anything different. Because if you defended yourself against any weapon, even a blunt, even a blunt weapon like a small Louisville slugger bat or a stick, if you defended yourself against any type of weapon, I guarantee that it was totally different than what you did in the cage. But this love affair that you have for your art makes you do the ridiculous, which is look at your art and say that vi and try to mold violence to fit your art instead of your art to fit violence. You are not training to block or, or avoid sucker punches. You're not. You're not training against multiple opponents. You're not. You're not training against weapons. You're not. So just cut it out. Cut it out. I am not interested in fighting. Fighting is a give and take. It's a give and take. When I show, for example, for example, when I show this particular move, I deliberately said that I would throw a punch first. The guy did not get this. He did not pick up on it. He saw it, but just all he, all he did was look at a clinch. Now, why did he look at that clinch? He looked at the clinch because Muay Thai is clinch heavy, and he had to find fault with how I put my hands. So, therefore, he tells me, you put your elbows in this way, and you put your elbows in that way. So, now I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. And I'm not picking on Muay Thai. I'm talking about any art. But specifically, this gentleman was talking about what I should have done with my arms here, what the man would have done, how we could have gotten out. Here is the point. One, I trained in Muay Thai back in 1993. And I'll tell you how, because some people are going to say, how would you do that? I never even heard of Muay Thai before 1993. K1, the fighting organization called K1, was founded by a student, or actually a fighter, of Kyoko Shin Karate. All right? A student of Masutatsu Oyama. Okay? He founded K1. K1 kickboxing became part, it was taught on Friday nights, and it became part of a curriculum in New York City where I had happened to be training in 1990 uh, in Kyokushin Karate. When that class came, they asked me if I would like to train in K1 rules kickboxing. So I said, okay, so I will go in Friday night and train and apply my karate to the K1 rules style of kickboxing. Well, K1 became... The rules were different than Muay Thai, but it became an outlet for Muay Thai fighters who no one had heard of, really. It was just an exotic martial art from Thailand at that time. All right? People don't want to admit it, but a whole lot of people back in 1990, 1991, weren't talking about Muay Thai. Okay? It was before the UFC. All right? So, now, Thai kickboxers are now coming from Thailand checking in the hotels in New York, and coming to train with us under K-1 rules in, at the Kyokushin Academy. 
I just killed Bruce in school. All right. So then after the class is over, then we stop uh, training in K1. And I would ask them, uh, you know, well, what is traditional Muay Thai? And, and then we would do these kind of things. So that's how I know. I know about keeping your elbows in so they can't close in on the body lock. I know about all those different things. When we are talking about self-defense and combat, those things do not usually come in place. Okay, so let me explain what I've been trying to say. Let me explain. I said that I would punch, throw a punch, grab, and once I grabbed, I would immediately start to spin and turn. So he cannot punch me, so he cannot get his base, so he cannot get his balance. Okay, here is a scenario. You are a Muay Thai boxer, or you know something about clinching. All right. We're fighting, and I throw a punch, crack, I come in, okay, if I come in, yes, there are three reasons, three ways you are going to do a technique, you are going to do it instinctually, now listen, because I will repeat myself, because I have to, you will do things, one, instinctually, you will do things after minimal thought, and you will do things after contemplation, I repeat, when you use a technique, people, you will do it instinctually, you will do it after minimal thought, or you will do it after contemplation. The better you are at instinctually using a technique, the better your chances of survival in a street confrontation. If I am entering into a clinch and I give an individual time to, one, think minimally, or two, contemplate, which is far too much time, then yes, he is going to snake through, and he's going to do this, and he's going to do everything that he got from his Ale late Alex Gone tapes and his Muay Thai lectures, and his Master Tati lectures, okay? Yes, he's going to be able to do that. That was never, and will never, be Safe Carmen's point. If I'm inside, I don't care what you know. If we lock up, and I throw a punch, and I lock up, and as soon as I lock up, I don't do some kind of Kali or Salat exotic punch to your groin. I don't do it. I just simply punch down. That's it. I just simply punch down, throw an uppercut, reach behind your ear, dig my nails into your web here, and rip. Okay? If I do that, if I do that, if I go... If I do that and then spin you, you have no time to think about the nuances of your beautiful clinch and everything that you got from Thailand, from Denmark, from New York City, from L.A., or your Master Toddy or, or, or Alex Gong DVDs. Do you understand? And the reason is, is because the key is to keep inserting something that inflicts pain, that inflicts pain, that gets a flinch response. One, two, three. Do you understand? Jeff Thompson said, I don't know if I can fight, but I can protect myself. When we are talking about fighting, we are talking about an interaction interaction. I throw a punch, know that you're going to throw a punch, and prepare for you to throw a punch back. And then I throw a punch, and you throw a punch, and I prepare for the long haul. The long haul is never what I've been looking for. If I've ever looked for long haul, it wasn't, at, it, the last time I looked for the long haul was about nine years old, ten years old. Okay? Now do I train in case or did I train? I mean, my life is fairly mundane today. But did I train at four of the long haul? Of course I did. But was that my plan? No. No. The point that I was making was you throw a punch. That's an insert. You grab. You don't set up camp in that position. So what is the onus? Is the onus holding my elbows in so he can't body lock me? Is that, was that the point? No. Not at the split second, it's not the point. Is the point that he can't slip in, or he can't swing in, or he can't swim in, whatever term you want to use, was that the point? No, that was not the point. The point was to what? Simply 
gross motor, grab a hold of this individual. Just grab a hold of this individual in a manner with such a grip that I can turn them. Get enough control to turn them. Not concerned with what they're doing to counter. Not concerning what move B would be if he swam through. Not concerning what he would do once I got in. No. To get enough control, I need to spin. I cannot do it with my fingertips. I cannot spin him with my thumbs. I have to grab him with two hands, and I have to have a grip. So once I had the grip, what did I do? I locked down my elbow. I brought my elbows from here, not from here. I brought them here, clenched down on my weight, and turned down, turned down. Any street fighter that has ever spun someone will tell you, forget the Muay Thai, they will tell you, you grab someone by the head, close your elbows in as a vice, bring them down. Bring them down and drop your body down and turn. As you are turning, you are dropping your body weight. They will automatically start to turn down into a spiral. All right? This is physics. Forget what you have learned on your, your, your DVDs. Okay? This is physics. So that is the point that I was trying to make. I don't care what you've trained in. I don't care what I've trained in. I don't care what anyone else trained in. You, and I repeat again, you use a technique after three things, or by way of three things, instinct, minimal thought, contemplation, instinct, yes, I'm repeating it again so you understand, instinct, minimal thought, which means you come to your conclusion or your decision to make a move quickly, or contemplation, which is far too much time if you've been training properly for you to need, okay? Once you move in and you continually inflict pain, ush, 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 maybe even spit to make the person retract. Because no matter how clean your mouth may be, no matter how clean a person's mouth may be, the automatic idea of being spat on is something that repulses people. These kind of things, inserting so you cannot contemplate for sure, all right? And you cannot even think minimally. Preferably. You understand? I'm not interested in fighting. Never have been. I'm interested in self-protection. Winning. That's it. By any means necessary. And that's what I teach. Uma Fight Camp. Safe Carmen. Train hard. Train smart. See you next video.